that can be spoken is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless was the beginning of heaven and earth. The named was the mother of all things. Always desireless, one can see the mystery. Always desiring, one can see only the manifestations. These two spring from the same source, but differ in name. This is the mystery. Mystery upon mystery, darkness within darkness, infinite profundity, gateway to all mystery. Something mysteriously formed, existing before heaven and earth, silent and void, it stands alone, unchanging, pervading all. Is this the mother of all things? I do not know its name. I shall call it Tao. For lack of a better word, I call it great. Being great, it flows. Because it flows, it is far away. Being far away, it comes back again. Hence the way is great. Heaven is great. Earth is great. Man follows the laws of the earth. Earth follows the laws of heaven. Heaven follows the laws of Tao. Tao follows its own nature. Great Tao flows everywhere, to the left and to the right. All things depend on it. It does not abandon them. It accomplishes in silence, laying no claim. It loves and nourishes all things, but does not lord it over them. All things return to it. It is great, but does not show it and is therefore truly great. Beauty is seen as beauty only because there is ugliness and good as good only because there is evil. To have or to be arise together, difficult and easy complement each other, long and short contrast one another, high and low rest upon each other, before and after are in perfect sequence. Therefore the sage goes about taking no action, teaching without words. All things rise and fall without cease. He nurtures them, but does not possess them, controls them, but does not abuse them, achieves his aim, but takes no credit. His work lasts forever.
That which shrinks must first expand. That which weakens must first have been strong. That which is cast down must first have been raised. Before receiving, there must be giving. This is the perception of the nature of things. It is thus that the soft and weak overcome the hard and strong. Yield and overcome. Bend and be straight. Be empty in order to be full. Die to be reborn. Have little and gain more. Have much and lose it. A wise man embraces the one and sets an example to everyone. Does not flaunt himself, but is seen. Does not justify himself. His integrity is never questioned. Does not boast. His worth is recognized. Is not proud and so endures. Does not contend. So no one disputes him. Therefore the ancients say, yield and overcome. Is that an empty saying? Behold, and all things will come to you. is an empty vessel. It is used, but never filled. Fathomless, it is a source of all things. In it all sharpness is blunted, all knots untangled, all glare tempered, all noise abated. Like a deep pool, it never dries up. I know not whence it comes, it images the ancestor. The greatest virtue is to follow the Tao, only the Tao. The Tao is elusive and intangible. Intangible and elusive, and yet within is image. Elusive and intangible, and yet within is form. So dim, so dark, and yet within is essence. Because the essence is most true, within it there is confidence. From the very beginning, to the timeless now, its name has never been forgotten. Thus, I perceive the creation. Because of this, I know the ways of creation. Thirty spokes share the wheel's hub. It's a space in the center that makes it useful. Shape clay into a vessel. It is a space within that makes it useful. Cut windows and doors and the walls of a house. It is these spaces which make it useful. Therefore, just as we take advantage of what is there, we should recognize the utility of what is not there.
Without going outside, one can know the whole world. Without looking out of a window, one can see the ways of heaven. The further one goes, the less one knows. Therefore the sage arrives without going, sees without looking, takes no action, yet achieves everything. He who pursues learning will increase every day. He who pursues Tao will give up something every day. By seeking less and less, non-action is achieved. By non-action, everything can be done. Order exists when things are allowed to run their course. It is not achieved by interfering. Empty yourself of every thought. Let the mind rest at peace. All things rise and fall while the self watches their return. They glow and flourish and then return to the source. Returning to the source is stillness. Stillness is the way of nature. The way of nature is unchanging. Knowing constancy is illumination. Not knowing constancy leads to disorder. Knowing constancy, the mind is open. With an open mind, you will be open-hearted. Being open-hearted, you will be one with a Tao. Being one with a Tao is eternal. The ancient masters were subtle, mysterious, profound. The depth of their knowledge was unfathomable. Because such men could not be understood, all we can do is describe their appearance. Watchful, like men crossing a stream in winter. Alert, like men aware of danger on every side. Courteous, like visiting guests, self-effacing like ice about to melt, simple like uncarved blocks of wood, open-minded like a valley, opaque like a troubled pool. Who can wait quietly until the pool is clear? Who can remain still until the moment of action. Those who follow the Tao do not seek. Not seeking, they are not swayed by desire for change. He who embraces the Tao guards against being overfull. Not being overfull, he is beyond wearing out and renewal.
fame or self, which matters more? Self or wealth, which is more precious? Gain or loss, which is better? He who is attached to things will suffer much. He who saves will suffer loss. A contented man is never disappointed. He who knows when to stop does not find trouble. He is forever safe. When there is Tao in the universe, horses plough the fields and haul manure. When there is no Tao, war horses are reared outside the city walls. There is no greater sin than desire, no greater curse than discontent, no greater misfortune than greed. Therefore, he who knows that enough is enough will always have enough. Beyond form, it cannot be seen. Beyond sound, it cannot be heard. Intangible, it is not to be grasped. Indefinable, these three merge into one. Its rising brings no light, its setting no darkness. An unbroken thread beyond description, it returns to nothingness. A formless form or imageless image. Stand before it and there is no beginning. Follow it and there is no end. When you stay with the Tao, you move in the present. Knowing the ancient beginning is the essence of Tao. Not knowing that one knows is best. Thinking that one knows when one does not know is sickness. If one is aware of this sickness, one is no longer sick. The sage cures by recognizing this sickness. Those who know do not speak. Those who speak do not know. Guard your speech as you guard the senses. Let all sharpness be blunted, all tangles untied, all glare softened. Be one with the dust of the earth. This is the primal union. He who has achieved this cannot be drawn into friendships and enmities, cannot be affected by praise or abuse. He is above all this. Truthful words are not beautiful. Beautiful words are not truthful. Wise men do not argue. Those who argue are not wise. Those who know are not learned. The learned do not know. The sage has no need to hoard. The more he does for others, the more he has. The more he gives, the greater his abundance. The Tao of heaven is pointed, but does no harm. 
the Tao of the sage is to act without striving. <laughs>